what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to trading learning 101 i'm mr wolf joining me today dna investments you want to say what's up what's up it is currently december 9th we're on episode three of the podcast what's been going on dna how you been man i've been good just a little busy you know how life is especially this time of the year but I always got time to trade and it's been going good. Time to trade, AKA keep an eye in the market for any opportunity mm -hmm. to pop up. And man, we have some, have seen some opportunity this week, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. That's weeks like this is why I trade. I love it. And for those of you that haven't been keeping up with the market in the day trading world, Every single day, the last, I'm going to say, couple weeks, we have seen stocks just absolutely go nuts. And to give you a quick little rundown real quick, we've got PPSI running from $8 to 12 yesterday. Now today, it's running from 10 to 12 LGVN every single day has been running up dollars at a time. Yesterday, running from 19 to 24. Today, getting a nice rip on it from 22 to 25. We just had ISPC run up from 15 to $18. That's a $3 rip. DWAC yesterday ran up from 50 bucks all the way up to a high of $70 just about. That's a $20 move to the upside. The grand finale, even though we've had a lot of other stocks run and pop off, we just had ISIG just go parabolic. The last four days, this stock was down here at $5 a share. And today, it just hit 35 bucks running mm -hmm. up $30. Talk about opportunity in the market. Yeah. Just insane. Yeah. This is what we live for as traders, and we got to take advantage of it when it pops up. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> in those times when, you know, you're on a losing streak, you had a couple, two, three bad days, there ain't much volume in the market. You have to remember like you always say, the market goes in cycles and those good times will come. Just keep your losses small in the bad times and take advantage of the good times and it'll work out. You just got to be smart about it. Well, that's, it's easier said than done. Yeah. It, it always comes down to experience. I feel like with new people and I, I try to look back when I was new six years ago, yeah, I would show up every day and I'd be freaking out because I always felt like I was missing out on all of the stocks, all of the professional traders were trading. Mm -hmm. Over time, by showing up every single day, day in and day out, you just start to get a feel for what's been popping off, what's been in play, stocks that keep popping up on the scanners. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A lot of times, and you've been a part of this Discord for, what, a year and a half now, going on almost two years? Yep, that's right. I, I think May will be two years. A lot of times, it's we're keeping our eyes on stocks that popped off. A couple weeks ago yes because just because stocks enter the back side of the move a lot of people just write them off and they think well that's it it's done for well not necessarily we got a lot of good bounce opportunities yeah to me dave which it's just my personal opinion and kind of what i have found a niche for but i would about rather trade a stock that is, you know, has pulled back. It ran two weeks ago and it's pulled back or it ran a week ago and pulled back. I I would about rather trade those type of plays because you're early to the party. 
you sit and watch the tape, watch how it's reacting at certain key levels. That is some of my most favorite plays, like PPSI, for instance. Man, we were, I started trading that thing at like 750 is when I started getting in because I seen it had an epic run. It, it had been pulling back for a few days, and I seen the potential. You can watch the tape and see those big buyers loading up and it was holding key levels. And then look what it done today. It's halted up at 1235. To it's, me, it's I was still running. And it's still running. To me, I am was early to the party. I seen it to where it's a crowded stock. Man, it's just so much indecision and I'm not comfortable, but that's just me. And it's it's perfect timing right now as well. What I teach here in the trading learning 101 community you want to see the setup before it hits the scanner when it hits the scanner that's when you know you're in the money and it just so happened as you were talking mm. about ppsi and it opens up from that halt look it's going off on the stock scanner right here yeah. to my right yeah ppsi yeah. that's when you know you're in the money because when you think about it Everybody has their scanners and screeners all set up to pick up stocks that are hitting new highs on all kinds of different time frames. New mm -hmm. daily highs, weekly highs, monthly highs, yearly highs, multi-year highs. People love stocks that are hitting highs. Mm hmm and if you yep. look at charts as well, when stocks, every time they're hitting new highs, that's when volume is at its most. Yes. It's human nature at its finest. That's, <clears throat> you mentioned tape reading, and that's a real popular question. We see a lot of newer people ask mm. and talk about. Yeah. How do I get better at reading the tape? What's the secret to the tape? How do I read it? I'm going to pull up my brokerage that I usually trade with, which is uh, Thinkorswim, just to show you guys the example of the tape, because I don't use the tape on Street Smart Edge. I use the tape on Thinkorswim. By just sitting here and just watching the tape, all it is is an auction between buyers and sellers. And the tape, all it's doing is printing receipts. Now, you'll hear people, they'll bring up and mention level two. Mm -hmm. I necessarily don't really focus on level two. When I first started out, level two was really, really big with me. And I would swear up and down by it. But over time, you start to see and realize there's a lot of games that are played on level two. People can flash orders. They can spoof orders. People can show a large size. I mean, you got platforms like Das Trader <clears throat> where you can hide your size. Let's say you want to buy or sell 50,000 shares. You can hide it on the level two and have it show up as 100 shares. And you see all the time there's people putting up fake orders. Mm -hmm. And when prices get to it, it'll vanish and disappear. There's, yes. a, there's a lot of games that are played with level two. You start to overcomplicate it and you're looking at way too many different things. And I was trying to quickly pull up a Google image of level two, continue to uh, break it down. But this is just a quick example right here. This is Das Trader. I can't get a better quality image. This is Das Trader platform right here. And this is the level two. And you can see right there, there's a display box. Let me see if I can actually get a better picture for us. So I can visually show everybody that you can hide your order with level two. So here's a good picture right here. And I'm going to get my little pen out so we can break this down a little bit. With level two, it was super popular in the 90s. Really popular yeah. in the 90s. Today, there's just so much manipulation with it. I The day I took level two off is when I really started to see my trading improve. 
because yeah. now it's one less thing that I have to worry about. Exactly. And it took time for me to realize, just pay attention to the tape because the tape is the receipt from mm -hmm. all of the orders. You can't manipulate the tape. So now that I got my little pen out here, you see this little thousand right there. That's where you put in your amount you want to buy. This person wants to buy a thousand shares. And then now you got the display right there. This is where you can hide your order. This person, let's say they want to sit on the bid and get filled. Well, they're, he can put in down here 100. And then he could even go into it even more and pick his route, a specific market maker, market maker ID that he wants to go through. And you could see him down there. Whatever he put in, let it be Edge X at 36, 370, and it'll display 100, even though he has 1,000 shares. So if you can manipulate something, why focus on it? And it's just too many games that are played right. at the end of the day. So, yeah. just, so just focus on the tape. It's the final say-so. Yeah, and I don't, I remember the tape. And to make this clear, I'm a long ways from understanding the tape. Like, I'm not good at it. But I remember you telling me that when I first started. And I remember thinking, man, it's just a bunch of red and green. And like it don't make no sense to me. I'll never get it. And I was like, I need to read up all these books on it and this and that. Reading the books and stuff, that's good. But if you'll just sit here and watch it and watch how it reacts at key levels, just sit and watch it. That's all you got to do. After a while, and I don't know how to explain it, but you just start getting a feel for it. Exactly. And, and it just starts making sense. I don't, I, honestly, it just, you have to sit and watch it. Mm -hmm. It's all about getting a feel for the environment. Yep. Yeah, and for a while, I wouldn't sit and watch it because I just thought it was too complicated. And I felt like I was about wasting my time. <laughs> I got to realizing when I did start watching it, how important, and it was a great asset to my trading. Mm -hmm. And getting creative with it helps as well. Mm -hmm. With Thinkorswim, and you'll see a lot of retail traders out here, they'll use Thinkorswim because it is a beautiful platform for day traders and yes. it's, it's free as well so why not you can separate it like for instance what i have here on the right side right here this is only showing me orders that are above 2000 or more mm -hmm. and then i have the normal tape right here that's spitting out two shares, 21 shares, five shares, you know, that's just a bunch of noise. I really yeah. want to focus and pay attention to the big money because that's what's going to move the stock. Here I got 4,000, 2,500, 2,000, and these can quickly get run through by all of this noise that's going down here. I don't even see there's a 12,500 order right there, but you see how quickly it's going down. Mm -hmm. at the beginning of the day when that market opens the tape's going so fast so it just helps with better visually seeing where the big money is and it just pops up like that and you're not going to lose track of it but you really get a feel for all right there i noticed there's a lot of selling a lot more selling than buying mm -hmm. going on on the tape there's somebody unloading. Mm -hmm. That's what it all really comes down to and noticing how it's reacting at support levels, resistance levels when it pops up to it. Is there that demand, supply, imbalance there? Mm -hmm. And experience, time is what gets you better at it. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Something... And I know you preach this a lot, but something that's really been dawning on me is to not make this game complicated. And I know you say it a lot, but it's really been dawning on me lately that it's hard. It this 
this job's the hardest job I've ever had, and you got to study and you got to do all that. You don't have to overcomplicate it. I remember when I first started, it seemed so complicated. I mean, all these things you got to learn and this or that, but it's crazy. As time goes on, it it starts getting more simple or something. I really don't know how to explain it, but it's not seeming as hard as it was. And you still have to study and, you know, do your homework for the new traders. It seems so overwhelming and you almost want to give up, but it's really not. It's not as complicated as you're making it. Yeah, exactly. I, th I think a big thing to do with it is everything to you is foreign. Yes. Like you hear yes. all of these traders abbreviating a lot of stuff like HOD, high of day, VWAP. Yes. And people are like, VWAP? What's VWAP? Yeah. You know? And low float. Like, what's low float? I know shares outstanding. What well, what's low flow and SSR short sale restriction? There's all of these different little elements and gears that you have to learn about. It's and it's up to you to learn all of this stuff, and you just have to accept it's going to take time, bro. That you're exactly right. My whole mindset and my performance changed. When I accepted, hey, I could be three to five years getting decent at this. When I, and I just threw three to five years. But when I accepted, it was going to take me a while to get good at it. It wasn't a get rich quick. It wasn't something going to happen next week, next month, six months, even a year. That's when my trading totally changed. I'm, that That's so key. That's so key. That's why we see people come and go, come and go. Yeah. I, don't do not get in the market if you're not going to accept the process and you're in it for the long haul. I've had so many friends since COVID jump in the market. They made a few thousand dollars because they got lucky. They was hooked as the best traders on planet Earth, and they're nowhere to be seen today. And they lost all their money pretty much. And it's because the they thought it was get rich quick. They wasn't dedicated to the years of process. Mm -hmm. And I'm in here for the long haul. You told me one time, it's just like when you go to practice to be a doctor, you know, it takes them years to get their license and to get good at that. And, and same way with the stock market. Yeah, definitely. It's a, uh... And it's also a skill that you'll learn for, a, you'll have it for a lifetime. Yes. And what better skill to have? Exactly. Man, it's the best job ever. Yep, exactly. All you need is an internet connection and a brokerage. Yep. Yeah, that's right. It's what we were just talking about the other day. When I make content and videos and mm -hmm. education videos or lessons and I put it out there, when I make these videos, I have that mindset that people, my work ethic, I have a really good work ethic and I will mm -hmm. put everything that I have into something. And I, I sit here every day for four or five hours a day, educating myself, learning, growing. I have that drive to grow better every single day. So when I put stuff out there, I just automatically assume that everybody else is going to have the same worth ethic that I have. Yeah. But unfortunately, no, they don't. A lot of people, they just come in. They think that they can just pick up on it and run through it, learn as quickly as they can, and then move on to the next big thing. They're searching for that secret, that holy grail, that trading strategy that's going to make them that million dollars mm -hmm. time experience working on yourself the yeah. secret all lies within you yes that's the secret and once you start understanding that that's when trading and navigating the market will become a heck of a lot easier yes yeah that's right well i know we gotta start wrapping it up here you gotta get going I want to thank yeah. you once again, DNA, for sitting down with me and having a chit chat. Well, thank you for the opportunity.
And for you listeners out there, if you've enjoyed this podcast, listen to us chit chat. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Join the Trading Learning 101 community where we all grow as traders and investors. And if you want to make an appearance on the Trading Learning 101 podcast, sit and chit chat with me and DNA, ask questions or tell your story, your trading journey. Leave a comment down below and we'll exchange emails and we'll link up. I'm always looking for new guests, people who want to share their experiences or their beliefs about the stock market, their mm -hmm. journey. So we're always looking for new faces to come on and hang out. We're interested to hear what you all have to say. Once again, it was a pleasure, DNA. Yes, sir. Well, same here. Thank you for all the listeners out there. That's going to wrap it up for episode three. And as I always say at the end of my videos, have that patience, have that discipline, study, study, study. I'll catch you all later, everybody. Peace. See you guys.